In this lecture, we'll start to learn very basic concepts of programming, which are values and types. As we have in human language numbers and characters, in programming language we have values which have different types. A value is one of the basic things a program works with, like a number or a letter. As you remember in our previous lecture, we have printed out hello world to the console. So here, hello world is a value and the type of this value is string. So this piece of text over here in programming language known as string. A string is a sequence of characters. A character is simply a symbol. For example, in the English, we have 26 characters. Computers do not deal with the characters. As you remember, I have mentioned in our previous lectures that computers understand the code in binary format. So they don't deal with the characters, they deal with the numbers. Even though you may see the characters on your screen, internally it's stored and manipulated as a combination of zeros and ones. So from this table, you can see that for any given letter, we have binary code for it. So this conversion of from a character to a number is called encoding and the reverse of this operation is decoding. ASCII and Unicode are the some popular encodings used. In Python, a string is sequence of Unicode characters. So Unicode was introduced to include every character in all languages and bring uniformity in encoding. Now these terms might be strange to you when you hear them for the first time. For now, you don't need to worry about them. When you become a professional developer, you'll get to use them. Here, I just want to give you a brief explanation of them. And you just need to know that the computer understands the code in binary format, not in characters. So the combination of these characters is known as string. So as I mentioned before, strings can be created by enclosing characters inside a single code or double code. Now, let's see how can we create a string in Python. So here, for example, if I print out anything inside the double quotes, for example, if I put over here, hello, and print out these values, so the type of this value over here known as string. So we can print out strings inside double quotes, inside single quotes. So for example, if I put single quotes over here, it's not going to be a difference. It will be also recognized as a string. Uh, the reason that we are using the double code, for example, if you want to print out single code over here, hello with the single code, you just need to put double code over here and at the end double code over here and double code over here. Now, if you run it, you see that it's printing out hello with single code. That's why we need double quotes. Now, sometimes people use triple quotes in Python. Triple quotes is something like this. So we are putting three triple code over here and over here. Now you see that when we put this and run our code, you see that nothing is changing. So it's bringing out the same result. The reason that we are using triple code over here, for example, if I put enter over here and write world over here, you see that our code will work perfectly. So it's working hello world at the uh, below this line over here. So that's why if you have new line characters in your uh, strings, you can put triple code over here. This is used especially when you are using XML coding inside Python files. So we will use them in our uh, advanced lectures. Here I just want to mention that if there is a new lines in your strings, you can use triple quotes. Now there are many operations can be performed on strings and we'll talk about them in our upcoming lectures. Now here you just need to know the basic concept. Now the question is if you want to deal with numbers as a number that we use in our daily lives, we have to declare our value as a number. So the most common value type that we will use for numbers is called integers. So I'll put over here integers. Integers basically are the numbers, but in programming lingo, we are using integer for the numbers. So these are the numbers without any decimal places. So in order to declare or create integer type, all we have to do is we just write a number without, without anything else. So here 12 is integer, 11 is integer. We can even use print function to print out these numbers over here. So if I use print function, and run our code, you see that it's going to print out 12 over here. So Python recognized this character as a number. So you just need to be careful about this, that here we are not putting any quotation mark over here, double quote or single quote. We are just putting the number itself so that Python recognize it as a number. You might be interested that what is the difference between the putting double quotation over here or not putting? Because in Python, if you want to perform any mathematical operation on these numbers, uh, you cannot do it while they are string. They have to be number to perform this operation. For example, if I put over here plus 10, you'll see that 
it will work as a mathematical operation and we will talk about these mathematical operations in our upcoming lectures here i just want to make sure that you understand this why we need to declare integers so integers needs to be declared to perform any mathematical operation on the numbers but here for example if i put 12 inside double quotation and run this you'll see that it's printing out 12 as a string but here you cannot notice it but here i'm sure that this is type of string now in many countries when you write a large number people put commas between numbers so for example when you write 1 billion people are putting the commas between the thousands but this number is not a legal integer number in python for example if we try to print out this number to the console print to console and let me just delete this one from here and run our code you see that it prints out one as a 100 and there's a space between these zeros so here the interesting moment is that this is the first time you are seeing a logic error so the code runs without producing an error but it does not produce the right thing basically we are saying that to print out 1 million but it's printing out 100 over here so this is the type of logical error now the question is is there any way to write the numbers in python for more readability like we do in our daily lives like this so instead of commas we have another character which replaces commas in this case for example instead of commas if i put underscore and underscore over here you will see that our code works perfect so if i run it you see that it prints out by ignoring these underscores over here so in your code if you have larger number you can put underscore and you just need to keep in mind that uh, the python will ignore the underscores over here this is just for making our code more readable so these whole numbers no matter if they are positive or negative are called integers in programming now the question is if we have a decimal place in our numbers uh, so for that we cannot use integers we have another type which is called float so this is a short form of floating point number for example if you have a number pi which is uh, we know that the, uh, the value for the number pi is is 3.14 15 and 9 so this is now float number in python because it has decimal place over here so let, let me just run our code to, to see that if it is printing out over here so you see that it's printing out floating number over here so for the numbers that we have decimal places we are using the number type which is float now the last type of value type is called boolean it's written like this so this is very simple because it only has two possible values which are true and false so these are the two values for boolean values note that these values begin with the capital letter in some programming language it doesn't matter but in python it matters that you have to write these ones in capital letters with t and with f and they don't have any quotation marks around them and this makes them different from the strings even though this is very simple type actually this type is going to be used a lot in our programs so to test if this is if something is true or not another cool feature of python is that if you don't know the value of the type you can use type function and the interpreter can tell you which type of the data is this now here we have a function of type so it's written like this type and and continued with the brackets so this function returns the type of any value that we put inside these brackets over here but uh, to print out this one to the console we just need to write this function inside print function so if you call this one inside print function and put anything over here let me just put the brackets over here so if i put any value inside this type function it will print out the type into the console for example if i put 12 over here and run our code you see that it will print out saying that this is integer so the short form of integer is int now you can directly use this function inside console over here for example if i put type and inside parenthesis i'll put one so you see that it's going to return int so let's try another one so if i put for example inside double quote one and run this function you see that inside double quotation the number is type of string so the short form of string is str so for example let's try another one so here i will put true and run our code you'll see that it's going to return bool so this is the short form of boolean so in the future there will be a times that the objects are created and you don't know the type of object because you have a lot of classes inside each other so if you want to know the type of object you can just call it inside type function so you just need to keep in mind that this type function return the type of value that we put inside these brackets over here 
So inside console, we can use it straight away, but but when you write it separately and see the output result, you just need to put it inside print function to see the output. Now with this here, we have also learned that inside print function, we can call another function as well to see the output. Before we were calling this print function for only strings or numbers, but here you see that we can call another function inside print function and this will return the result type that we get inside function. So this is another cool feature of the print function that we can see the outputs in our console. So with this, we have completed our lecture. So in this lecture, we have learned what are values and what are the basic types of the values. So hopefully everything is clear.